Lescom is overpowered. A bold statement at first glance, but we'll shortly understand how Lescom's forces are hypercorrect to design maps in a certain way before she becomes broken. However, Lescom doesn't seem great. Her defensive stats are average, so it appears better to build 4 stars defenders like Cura or Bubble. Also, all 6 stars defenders look stronger and more defensive than her. Her skill 1 is weird and inconsistent. The death buff isn't very impressive, it blocks a hit, cool, but it's automatic activation and the uptime strongly depends on what is attacking her. Skill 2 doesn't make sense for a defender, the stanchions is unreliable and she even stuns herself. Plus, the damage is pretty bad at 700 odds DPS per target. Talent 2 is fine, but not impressive at all. Also, Lescom has a unique range that only Blitz and her have, but who cares about the attack range of defenders? And yet, Lescom proved herself to be game breaking in multiple CC events. But if it's not her skills or Talent 2, what makes her so good? Well, it's the only thing left, Talent 1, so let's dive right into it. Lescom's first Talent gives 1 SP to herself and a random ally adjusting to her when she gets hit. The random ally part is actually random. Note that she can give SPs to allies who can't receive any. For example, dudes who have the skills ready, or an SP lockout, or summons. In which case, this SP disappears, sadly. But it doesn't matter because when you're using Liscom, you should be SP battering only one operator, ideally one who can often receive SPs like Fang or Cutter skill 1. Also, for optimal SP delivery, you want to use your skill 2 and not proc it. But we'll go back to that later. This is because Lescom actually needs to both get hit and take damage to proc Talon 1, meaning Poison Haze and other dots do not activate it. Same for when she blocks or dodges hits. Now, onto the main topic. When is Lescom busted? Well, most of the time, she really isn't. However, the potential of her first Talon seems limitless. In fact, it is a very strong support Talon that can help in very various ways, depending on who she is feeding. DPS, healing, cold control, DP generation, you name it. To make her use cases easier to understand, I made this flowchart, which we will detail block by block. So going from the top, does anything in the map attack? You would think this comes needs very fast attacking enemies to truly be good, but that is not quite the case. Your classic useless melee enemy is often good enough if you can gather 3 of them into this form. Now, she certainly is much better with key be brothers and such, but it's not quite needed. Overall, it's much better to use 2 DPS operators rather than 1 powered by this form. As such, she is only interesting when you cannot simply sort of the map away. Additionally, this needs to be able to tank. This is where skill choice comes into play. If you need the extra death, you can use skill 1, but skill 2 gives a lot more SPs in the long run. The last condition is she needs to not kill what is giving SP. This comes works great with stone strats, so it's quite important that she does scratch damage. Though, in some cases, if you can cycle those small enemies nicely, she can still be very strong. Alright, enough with theory crafting, I'll do some examples now. This comes main use is to help deal with elites, so in these different CCs, she does just that. In CC2 Blade, she charges Weedy for her to take down Avengers, all squad, and heavy defenders with ease. There is another strategy where she is used to give KOB skill 1 infinite binds against foes. In CC4 Lead Seal, the beat gets so much SPs, she stunlocks 2 golems and Big Bob for 30 minutes straight. In Down Seekers, the map is simply trivialized, as you can power Black Knight enough so that she puts the whole map to sleep, including yourself. The exact same idea works for CC9 Deepness, although you need Blemish and Skill 2 for proper cycles this time. Last but not least, my favorite actually, Risk 30 Cinder with only Defenders. Blemish and Skill 1 gets enough SPs to use only one auto attack in between every skill use, giving her enough heal and DPS to clear the right side. Alright, thanks for watching. If you're not convinced this comes great now, well, that's too bad for you. Next time this prop is going to be about Blame Shine Skill 2's rather complicated mechanics. In the meantime, have a great day.